All right, this is section 8.3 on a video card uh, specifications. Uh, first of all, the graphics card is the biggest, most important expansion card that we could possibly put in our computer. When we talk about graphics cards or video cards, we're talking about the whole thing. And really, uh, for any comparison, it is a computer unto itself. Uh, that graphics card in the picture right there is better than any computer I had for the first 10 years I had computers on its own with what it can do. So when we talk about the graphics card, we're also talking about the GPU or the graphics processing unit. Uh, just like a computer has a CPU, every graphics card has a GPU. The GPU, just like when we build a computer, is independent of the graphics card maker. There's only a couple GPU makers, but then there's many uh, makers of graphics cards themselves that put all the parts together and make uh, the card in the end. Graphics cards have a bunch of specifications just like PCs do. Uh, and we're going to talk about what those specifications are, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can do a straight line comparison between specifications just like you can't say CPU speed is 3.2 gigahertz. That's better than one that's 3.0 gigahertz because 3.2 is higher than 3.0. We know that's not true. There's lots of other things like CPU cache and number of threads, uh, architecture of the CPU, all those things go together. And that's why we use Passmark to do our comparisons uh, in the same way um, we have to do the same thing with um, GPUs to get the comparison of GPUs. So let's go ahead and get started on uh, graphics cards and graphic card specifications. So I already said this, they're extremely important um, for some computer items and not as important for others. In all cases, we have to have a graphics card, but it could be integrated into our motherboard and into our CPU, um, or it could be a completely separate one. So um, if we have an integrated graphics card, uh, like it says in the third bullet here, it's not completely free. It's not like it, it uh, is, even if it's a separate graphics card, that doesn't mean that um, it doesn't use any of the CPU processing at the same time. So when we look at CPUs, we have two options. We can either have a separate graphics card um, that's a dedicated graphics card that we put in an expansion slot, or we can have an integrated one that's part of our motherboard. Um, there are some things that we use to decide that. Uh, what are the requirements of the PC that we're looking at? How much money do we have? How, what is the cost of what we want? And what kind of specifications are, are we looking for? So those things all come into play when we're deciding on which one uh, to purchase. And when we do, like I said before, there's some other things we have to look at. For instance, how do we want to connect to the video card? This uh, picture, which is also in your um, online textbook, shows the difference between the analog or those ones outlined in blue and the digital um, output sources that we have for um, our video cards. We need to know what we're going to hook it to, to know which one we want in general. Well, not in general. Digital outputs are always better than analog outputs, but you might have, just like we hear at school, a multiple of analog outputs. Um, S-Video and VGA as well as composites are analog outputs that the input to the other device is 100% um, analog. Analog outputs are older, they don't refresh as fast, and they aren't as clear as a digital output. DVI outputs can either be, um, the output from them can connect to either a digital or an analog source depending on the kind of uh, connection and, and plug that it has. In general, you can see this, the names of them, but there's this slot here. If these four dots exist around the slot, then it has the capability of outputting analog signal um, to your monitor. So you can see DVI-A, that's what it looks like, DVI-Single, DVI-Dual. All of them are, are both digital and 
analog based on those four dots right there, those four pinholes allow you to, actually these are pins and the pinholes will be on the uh, video card. Uh, however, if they don't have those, then, it, then that DVI output is a DVI-D or a DVI, uh, D, either dual or single. And that, that is defined by whether those are there. And then on the other side, we have all um, digital only <coughs> outputs, HDMI and DisplayPort being the two biggest that are on video cards. Most video cards have a single HDMI and can have multiple display ports. Um, if they have multiple outputs on the high-end cards, they can all have many display ports. Those usually exist on laptops. There are not many of those on video cards, but these are the kind of plugs that we're gonna look at, um, or we have the option of seeing on video cards when we go to purchase them. And this is just another look at what the cables look like as far as a VGA cable. Uh, we've seen those um, whenever we pull out our um, monitors here in the classroom. It's got a blue plug on the end. That's a VGA. This is a DVI. It normally has a black or a white plug on the end. Uh, and then HDMI and DisplayPort look fairly similar. The difference being that on HDMI it has kind of two sides that are angled, whereas DisplayPort only has one side that's angled. So you can't plug these in, and the internal of that is obviously very different as well. Um, HDMI and DisplayPort can both carry audio as well as video in the signal, which is why HDMI is used widely for TVs. You can plug it straight in from your computer to a TV and the sound comes out through your TV, or in this case of the room, through the projector overhead, you can have the sound coming out of there as well. DisplayPort can do the same thing. One of the things that DisplayPort can do that HDMI cannot is that on a single DisplayPort, if you have the right kind of monitor, you can daisy chain four monitors together off of a single DisplayPort uh, and see all four of those monitors together. So that's one of the better things about uh, a DisplayPort connection. So here's some uh, just real world uh, a video card here showing a DVI that does not do analog. You can see the dots aren't there, although it has a VGA analog output and it has a um, HDMI output there as well. And you can see the difference between the, whether it has the dot or not. And many of the newer ones do not do analog output. Analog, for all intents and purposes, is a legacy thing that, that some especially lower end video cards still support, but higher end ones in many cases assume that you're gonna get a higher end um, monitor to go along with it as well. Uh, here's another picture of the DVI. There's one that does, this is actually an adapter, um, but you can see the difference between whether it has the um, extra holes there that are capable of doing the analog or whether it's just gonna be a digital only output on that. As far as manufacturers of the graphics processing unit, the processor that goes on the video card, there's only two. AMD and Intel make CPUs. AMD and NVIDIA make GPUs. So th those are the only two options of um, video cards um, for uh, the GP GPU manufacturers. And actually AMD several years ago bought out um, the existing uh, video card manufacturer to be the biggest second GPU manufacturer out there. So AMD and NVIDIA are the two GPU manufacturers, but you don't buy an AM, a video card from AMD, just like motherboards are made by ASUS and Gigabyte, and um, video cards are the same way. These other manufacturers put together the whole thing and, and produce the video card itself. So I've already said this, um, the GPU stands for graphics processing unit, and those are made by NVIDIA and AMD, are what does the processing just like the CPU does the processing. The difference is the GPU processes the video um, and takes the um, requirement of the video processing off of the CPU, making a, a PC with a, a separate uh, a video card run effectively better because it takes that load off the CPU as well. 
GPUs can be more powerful, actually, than some CPUs, and some graphics cards can have more memory than the PC that you put it into. So let's talk about uh, some of the terms that you're going to see when you look at, um, at GPUs and, and graphics cards in general. In CPUs, we remember that we had um, hyper-threaded and dual and quad and several cores um, on a single CPU. The same thing exists on GPUs. In fact, they do them differently. Um, if, if you're talking about cores, just like in a CPU, uh, if we were talking about a hyper-threaded core, that was an Intel-only term, um, but you could have multiple cores on an AMD processor as, as well, and it did hyper-threading, but it wasn't called, called that. In the same way, in NVIDIA and AMD, they use a, a, a comparable term. So, in the AMD hardware, you hear, uh, you'll see it called stream processors. How many st stream processors exist on a particular GPU? And in um, NVIDIA, you'll call them, you'll see it called CUDA cores. How many cores? Are there and this is not a straight line comparison because you'll see one with a thousand stream processors here and 200 CUDA cores here thousand isn't more than 200 because they're totally different there you're comparing apples to oranges but when you're comparing oranges to oranges if you're looking at two AMD GPUs more stream processors is better than less stream processors. In the, in the same way on NVIDIA, more CUDA cores is better than less CUDA cores, but you can't compare CUDA cores to stream processors as a straight line thing because they're not exactly the same thing. Just like uh, CPUs have clock speeds, GPUs have clock speeds, and they're measured, measured in megahertz or gigahertz, just like CPUs are. Again, they're not a straight line comparison. You can't say this processor is this um, uh, core speed and this is this, this is bigger, therefore this is faster. That's why we use Passmark. But if you're looking at two AMD ones with the same number of CUDA cores, then the higher clock speed certainly is an indicator of, of possibly a faster one. But core clock speed means the speed, the cycles per second that that particular uh, GPU can do. GPUs or graphics cards have memory on them and the more memory is better. So um, it's called graphics DDR. So it's instead of it being DDR 1, 2, 3, 4, now we have GDDR and in general, the ones in use today are, or 4, 5, and, and 6 now is coming out for newer graphics cards. So it has memory on the card and you could have a lot of memory on the card. And like I said, you could conceivably have more um, VRAM or RAM on your video card than you do system RAM in your computer. So that's one of the things that we need to know and we need to compare is how much memory is on the video card and accessible to the video card itself. Um, the next thing is the, um, that's really talking about the, the type what, what generation it is, and then we inside the gener generation, we can look at the uh, amount of RAM, whether it's got 512, or it's got 2 gig, or 4 gig, or 8 gig, or 12 gig. How much memory does the video card have as well? Greatly impacts, just like it does on a computer, how much it can load uh, a GPU is affected by how much memory uh, it has available to it. Memory bandwidth is that speed of the memory, just like when we looked at DDR3, uh, it might be a speed of 1333 megahertz, and DDR4 might be 2400 megahertz. GDDR has different speeds that go along with it as well, and the bandwidth is the speed of the individual um, memory. And along with the memory clock, speed, which is what we're used to, that it also has a bigger bus width. Um, on our PCs, we're looking at 32-bit buses and 64-bit buses, but on our graphics card, because it's all internal, it can be built to handle much more. So you've got um, memory buses that go 128 and 256 bits 
uh, effectively double and quadruple of what the system itself does because all that's con contained internally inside. So that's one of the things you're going to see is the bandwidth of the memory as well that's on there. Okay, those are the specifications that we have for this particular section. Um, in the reading though, when we take a look at the reading, you need to go through and you need to, I want you to watch this GPU Specs Explained video. Uh, I've already kind of gone through um, what the plugs look like and, and shown you these graphics and, the, and what we just went through. And um, the last thing is kind of understanding, we, we know where they connect on that PCI Express uh, X16. Um, and I want you to read through some of these other um, ones that I didn't talk about, some of which I did before going into, and I want you to make sure you've clicked on all of, up to this point, we should have gone through all of section one, 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 two, all of two, and two, one, and now all of section three and three, one in this part before entering the quiz uh, three or 8.3.